it just allows us to spend more quality time together as a family and focus on what's really important. The tiny house is a perfect fit for our family. So it's just one model of living sustainably. It allows us to save money. It allows us to give our child exactly what he needs. It allows us to not overconsume. It allows us to be closer together. Um, it also forces us to get out, outside, even in the worst of weather, too. Get, get into the garden, get into the forest, working with the bees. The house is 30 feet by 8 feet, so it's a standard width, which means we can tow it on the road. With the loft in the bedroom is 240 square feet. We live here, myself and my wife Bianca and our two-year-old Bodie and our 13-year-old Cocker Spaniel Sadie. I like to live here for as long as we possibly can, and I think the house is big enough that we can adapt some of those rooms and, and maybe even build a, a second loft if we need to. Um, as long as it's purposeful and, and we're still getting what we need out of it, I'd, I'd like to live in here for as long as possible. With us living on this primary piece of property as secondary residents, we take care of the property, the bees and the chickens and the gardens, and we maintain uh, the sanctity and the biodiversity of the property. And so with the land steward model of living, there will be so many more opportunities if municipalities get behind it um, that, you know, folks who do uh, own a lot of land who are now aging can stay in their homes and have young people live on their properties to take care of it. It's such a beautiful model. Okay, so the very first thing that you see when you come in the double doors is our beautiful galley kitchen. Living in a tiny house, you don't exactly have the largest amount of space, so this is completely catered to us as a three-person family or a couple with a toddler. So. You know, we, we left space here when designing to dry dishes. One of the things too with tiny house living, especially having a gray water system, is you have to be very careful about your output. So we have organic, uh, locally sourced soaps that we use. I use that as my hand soap, but that's also my dish soap. I'm sure you're probably noticing that we don't have anywhere to cook our food, but that's because as a family, we don't really use the oven. Um, so we have an induction burner. In the primary residence, if we wanted to do a big chili or, um, we wanted to say cook a Thanksgiving turkey. There's an oven there, which is so great because primary residences often exist when you're tiny living. So um, we can use that when we need to. And we also have the barbecue. So the great thing about the barbecue is you can cook anything and everything. So this is an apartment sized fridge and it's perfect for the space. And to be honest with you, we don't buy a lot of items that you need to refrigerate. So our living room is my favorite part of the house. One of the other things that we were working with was when Bodhi was younger. You know, he's waking at night and with the loft, which I'll show you later, we don't have a cover. So when sleeping with your child, I didn't want him to wake up and fall. Um, that was something that we had to take into consideration. So I needed the couch to be also a bed or be able to mo be moved into a bed. And it actually is, uh, is completely bare underneath. So I can actually store tons of things under here. It's kind of disguised as a sectional, but this bed actually flips out and hooks in right here and then the ottoman goes at the end so now we have a double bed if we want to have guests or if I need to sleep down here with Bodhi. Our family loves to sit here. We love this space. It's big, it's deep, it's amazing. Justin is 6'3", he fits here perfectly. Bodhi plays here, it's, it's perfect. So this actually lifts up and this slides out. And so this is how we eat our dinner. So we just pull it out a little bit and Justin and I sit here and Bodhi sits here and we all eat dinner together. I also use this as my office. I do all my work here. I have the inspiration that I need from the garden and everything, so this is really great. Uh, this thing also has three drawers down the side and three drawers down that side. And then the other side, the panel flaps up as well, so we could also have potentially six people at this table. So that's where we keep our footwear in the summer. Um, so then in the winter, we have a three-tiered shoe rack right here where we store all of our bigger, more bulky shoes, rubber boots, all of the things. This is uh, nice and clear right now, but um, in the winter, it's so great uh, to have that. And then so here, uh, we can just slide this, we can hide it, and then all of our jackets get hung up right here, and then we can also slide this over and hide it. It's all very minimal, and of course, in the summertime, we don't need any jackets, so they don't exist here. This piece also serves as 
another huge integral piece of the tiny house. So we have three tiers. The bottom tier is typically served for um, things I use daily. We have our dog leash in here. I have my hairbrush in there. Um, I've got some sunglasses hanging here. And then these two tiers, because they're out of my eyesight, <laughs> then I can kind of stuff a few more things in there. So in the winter, typically, I have our hats, our mitts, our toques, our scarves. Um, in the bathroom, we have a composting toilet. So this composting toilet is so beautiful because it's self-contained. We don't have a sewage output. And um, it's just easy to work with, easy to use. And for tiny homes specifically, especially tiny houses on wheels, um, a composting toilet is great because being self-contained, then you can go on the road with it. Um, we have some mulch here, constantly you know, turning things around. Does it smell occasionally? Pretty rarely. So in this space too, we have a laundry basket. We have two shelves. First shelf is mine, second shelf is Justin's. The space is great. Um, as you can see, we do have some exposed piping because when we moved into the tiny house, all the plumbing was outside. And as everyone knows with our beautiful Canadian winters, <laughs> you need to have everything inside. Um, so all the plumbing came inside. We have our hot water heater above here. And so we still just haven't really aesthetically covered it. So our shower is lovely and it's big. And so it serves its purpose again. All the plumbing was brought inside. We have to plug in our hot water. Our hot water heater, uh, as I said, is up above us. This is one of my favorite parts of the house. It's Bodhi's bedroom, it's storage, and it's also our closet. So this room is six by eight. We read him to sleep in his rocking chair, and then in the ottoman here, I have Bodhi's toys. So I have his toys, I have some extra blankets, I have some extra storage things. We have a capsule wardrobe for both Bodhi, I and Justin, and um, we also switch our clothes out seasonally. So one thing that uh, we also have is a 10 by 10 storage unit outside of town. That is great because we flip our wardrobes. So with the floor bed, I'm fine with him being in here. He's super safe, we have a lock on the door. Justin made this door out of, uh, this is all repurposed. We used to paddle with these paddles and then this is actually a window unit with a metal screen and so we put this in the lock is on the other side this is great because in the middle of the night Bodhi is old enough to wake up come and try and climb up the loft this is our loft as you can see there is a decent amount of headspace we never feel cramped in this space ever Justin has his side, I have my side. As you can see, we don't have a lot. We have a TV that we just recently put in and we love it. We can come up here on a rainy day, the whole family, and we can snuggle, watch TV, just relax, and it's the most beautiful space. And one day, maybe Bodhi will move up here. So the cost just for the unit was 60,000 Canadian dollars. And we, Tried to go down many avenues. We were gonna have one built, we were gonna do it ourselves, <laughs> which thankfully we didn't with a toddler and very limited time and skills. Um, <laughs> we decided to sell our condo. And so when we bought it, it basically looked like this. And on the inside, it was just a shell. We added uh, an extension to the bathroom and, and Bianca, we did uh, the whole kitchen. We put in the couch. Um, we did a little bit of work, but um, most of the big foundational work was already done. Our heating and cooling is uh, pretty simple. We have air conditioning up around the side so it's always in the shade. We also have some sun shade sails right in front of the house that cover strategic sections of the tiny house. In the winter we have electric heat so we have a small oscillating heater. It heats the entire place. The house is insulated so well and then in Bodhi's room we have kind of a coiled floor heater that we use for his bedroom. Uh, this winter, however, we will be getting a cubic mini, which we're very excited about. Uh, there's nothing more nostalgic than a wood stove. Our water is hooked up to the primary building here, uh, and then it's trenched and it's wrapped in PVC piping and it's insulated. Uh, it also has heat tape around it, and so that comes all the way to the tiny house underneath the trailer, and then right underneath the trailer, we have the pipes wrapped in heat tape. The shower, however, has a tiny, about, you know, four or five inch gap that's n that we couldn't um, wrap in piping, it's too far in there. So what we, we did was created a salt water solution that after every shower we would pour, you know, maybe like half a cup down and um, then that would keep that section from freezing. So it's just another one of these things being 
in the tiny house and living alternatively like this, um, these are considerations that you have to make or your water is going to freeze. I'm a teacher at a land-based Montessori adolescent school. And I am the owner and founder of the Giving Tree family, and I consult on sustainable living options. Right now, my biggest focus is the sustainable living models. So whether that's land stewardship, whether that's co-housing, whether that's eco-villages, whether that's retrofitting homes that already exist, I just coach people on how to live a more sustainable lifestyle, whatever that means to you. But I'm also challenging council to um, change the bylaws because the bylaws and zoning don't support alternative living, they just don't. One of the challenges with living tiny with a toddler, they're beautiful creatures and we love them, but they're just sick all the time. And that is a huge challenge for us, especially living in a colder climate. Meltdowns are that much louder, that much more intense. You know, instead of going somewhere and slamming a door and uh, we have to face it. And that just makes us stronger. There's the challenge too of limitations. So mm -hmm. we are hooked up to the grid, but we're, we're just basically plugged into an outlet. So <laughs> we can't be running uh, a bath and the stove and making coffee all at the same time. Things have to be planned. Eventually we'd like to be a little bit more self-sufficient with, with our power, but we'll have limitations then too. I think one of the biggest challenges too is psychologically living in a tiny house because it, it's really romanticized. Anybody could build one of these and you can design it. It's like, yes, but can you live that? Can you live that way? Can you stay true? Like, can you walk the walk? Because psychologically it's, it's hard because we've grown up in a generation where we have our own things, we have our own space and it's just get, that space is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger as a North American society, just over abundance of space and, and things that have just been ingrained into our minds a little bit. So it takes a long time to unwind. We're so, ha we're so happy here. Uh, we had to risk a lot to, to come here and um, I'm just proud of us for, for taking those risks. In life, you have to take risks. Um, you don't want to look at, back on, at life and just say, oh, I didn't do it because uh, it was just too risky. And if that risk means that you're going to be happier, then you're trying to do everything in your power to, to do it. And um, this is just a reflection of our perseverance as a family. I'm very proud to say I live in a tiny house and everybody's always asking about it and it's, it's just a special place. Bodhi always wants to be outside. He wants to be with nature. Seeing him just doing everything that he's doing is, it just blows my mind that we could never have given him this had we not made this decision. It gives us a lot of gratitude. Like we're really fortunate to, to be on a property like this. So definitely I think the long-term goal is this philosophy of of living purposefully, living simply, living on the land. I think that will always be with us, that we've definitely set the precedent for that now. There's no way we can go back. We've seen what this lifestyle can do for our family. We've never been happier. We've never been just connected as we are now. Definitely this lifestyle is something that we're gonna live for a long time. Please share this video if you liked it. Also, be sure to subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlists for more stories like this. Thanks for watching.